Well, we've been in the uh, book of Galatians, this uh, letter that is uh, so profound. Now, the verse, uh, verses I'll be reading today, you really like. All right, this is one of these verses that you just like. Here it is. It's, uh, it's the grace that bears fruit. So this is about the fruits of the Spirit. All right, so here we go. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness. gentleness and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And if we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. This is a good word for us. Well, let's see if you recognize this line from a song. For the times, they are a-changing. Anybody know what, uh, who wrote that? Bob Dylan, the young person back there. Whoa! I didn't even know if you'd know who Bob Dylan is. You love Bob Dylan. All right. Uh, Bob Dylan received, and many were flabbergasted at this, the Nobel Prize for Literature because of his new poetic expressions that contributed to the traditions, the great American tradition of songwriting. And, and so this is the guy who, well, he wrote, Tangled up in blue, blowing in the wind, forever young. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He, um, like a rolling stone, he, he wrote all these great songs. And this, this line... Uh, comes from this song, The Times They Are Changing. And I want to read the um, lyrics uh, to the first stanza. This song became a rallying song for the civil rights movement. And here it is. Come gather round, people. Wherever you roam, and admit that the waters around you have grown, and accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone. If your time to you is worth saving, then you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone for the times they are a changing and then he brings this masterful song to to a close with a reference to the words of Jesus 
as the present now will later be past, the order is rapidly fading, and the first one will later be last for the time. They are changing. The first will be last, and the last will be first. God is interested in change. The times, they are changing. Scholars say that all of us here have lived through more change than any other generation on the face of the earth. Through all the past eons, we have lived through more change than any other people. I mean, how many of you have cell phones? When I started, that was a rhetorical question. You didn't have to answer. <laughs> when, when I started, we had a black dial phone that you had to do this to. Now they make those as play toys for kids, and they don't know how to use them. <laughs> We've lived through change. And some of it's been good, but some of it has not. When we go through such rapid change, the temptation is to try to cling to the past. We want to handle change by clinging to something that doesn't change. And so we hold on tightly. But in doing so, we can miss the true beauty that God is trying to do among us. Now, the church of the Galatians is trying to handle all the change that was happening in their lives by holding on to the past. So they wanted to hold on to the Jewish traditions and force people to practice them. And you will remember that Paul writes that you do not have to become Jewish to become a Christian. If you're a Hebrew, fine, cherish your traditions. But don't take those traditions and harm others with them. There's a um, former dean of Duke Divinity School. And Elaine Heath is her name, and she writes that tradition, traditions are all right. Tradition is when we pass something on to the next generation for safekeeping. But too often we cling to outward traditions and miss the tradition behind the traditions, the reason why we do certain things. What is the tradition behind all the traditions of Christianity? Well, you, we could probably say many things, 
But I want to put this one forward. And here it is. God makes all things new. It's why Jesus came, isn't it? Jesus came to come and make us new. To make me as an individual new. To make us as a covenant community new. To make this cosmos new. Jesus came to make us new. Now we pass on traditions. The church does. We have certain songs that we want people to remember. We pass them on. We pass on uh, such traditions as baptism and communion. We want these sacraments to be practiced and cherished. But the trouble is, is that sometimes we pass on the outward traditions accompanied with these things and forget the inward tradition that's behind it all. So we pass on baptism, and then people want to talk about, well, how do we baptize? How much water do we use? Do we do it forward dunk or a backward dunk? Do we um, baptize a child with sprinkling or not? Do we, um, do we do this in a running river, or do, can we do it at a baptismal font? And people argue about these things. And they're arguing about outward traditions. Now, what is the tradition behind the tradition of baptism? Jesus makes all things new. That's what he does. He cleanses us from sin and raises us to new life. That's the tradition behind the tradition. Jesus can make us no, it's good stuff, right? So don't ever give up on people because God is making all things new. So I know someone that was brought back to life by Narcan, opiate overdose, on her way out of this world, and Narcan saved her life. Now, she is a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, she has paid all her fines. Now, she does not do drugs anymore. Now, she is in school to better herself. Now, she is working while she's in school. Now, she is a part of a covenant community. She's a member of my last church. Now, she is reunited with her daughter, Don't ever give up on people. God doesn't. God makes all things new. Now, here in this scripture, though, Paul admits that there are things that are contrary to God making all things new. And these things are given a label. It's called the flesh. Do not live according to the flesh, right? And its desires. They're, they're opposed to what God wants. We're to live by the grace that comes of the Spirit that Jesus has sent to dwell in all of us. You 
who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Now, I purchased a new commentary for this series on the book of Galatians by David De Silva. And David De Silva says this about the flesh. David De Silva says, when we hear that we're not to live according to the flesh, we think body. And we think of the desires of our body get us into trouble. And that the body has this lower nature which runs contrary to God. And that it's localized in the body. And if we listen to it, look out. And David De Silva said, the flesh is not equal to the body. He says, after all, it's in the body that you receive the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of the God, uh, of God. The, the body is a tool. It can be used for either bad or good, but it's not inherently bad. It is not equivalent to the flesh. And then David De Silva gives a remarkable interpretation of the flesh. And here's what he says. The flesh is the influence of the present evil era that runs contrary to God that causes us to think and adopt patterns that build up the self as the center of the world instead of being other-centered and God-centered. It is the influence of the present evil era. But the spirit is greater than the flesh. The spirit is more powerful than that. So, where I was last uh, appointed in Dayton, I don't know if you knew this, but at the time in which I was there, one of the years, Dayton had the highest opiate deaths per capita of anywhere in the nation. More people died of opiate overdoses than anywhere else in the entire nation. We had a... Um, a forum about this crisis at the church. And I was in a discussion group with other people. And one of the persons in the group who is a Christian said this during the discussion. Narcan is a waste of time and resources. When you give Narcan to somebody, that person is just going to do it again. A drug addict is choosing death. We should just let them die so it's not a drain on our resources. Now, I listened to that. And I wondered what was all behind it. But I'll tell you this. The way that person was talking 
was of the flesh. The flesh says certain things in this present era. And what it boils down to is the flesh says some people matter more than others. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, the first, those you think matter more than others, those who have power over others, those who have riches, those who have all the things that others want by appearance, the first will be the last. And the last, those who are powerless, those who are beaten down, Jesus will raise up. And the last will be the first. A great reversal. Jesus cares about change. He does. They asked him once. What is the greatest commandment? In other words, tell us of the traditions. And Jesus gave the tradition behind the tradition. You remember what he said? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your Neighbor as yourself. So let's look at the fruits of the Spirit here. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you know that the fruits of the Spirit are the virtues the values, the personality traits, you could say, of Jesus. The Spirit takes these things and applies them to the covenant community. And notice what is in the emphatic position it is love. Love. We are to be a people who love. Now, I, can you imagine this? Let's suppose Jesus is walking in the flesh and he sees someone who has overdosed on opiates, and Jesus has Narcan in his hand. What do you think Jesus would do? These virtues are what we practice. We're to have joy. That is the pleasure of God's presence together. We are to have peace right relationships with each other that Jesus produces by the Spirit, by grace. We're to have patience, patience with those who fall to the flesh. We are to have kindness to exhibit acts of love and become a harbor for those who are going through a stormy life. We are to have generosity to give to those who are in need. We are to have faithfulness, a loyalty to each other that is not built on someone agreeing with us. We are to have gentleness where we restore someone without harsh judgment into the body. 
we are to have self-control where we say no to the flesh and yes to the Spirit. And how do you say yes to the Spirit? We pray. God, fill me with the Spirit. God, direct me. Give me your mind. What do you feel about this? Give me your fruits of the Spirit so that I can be loving and patient and kind. We pray all the way through about nearly everything that the Spirit may fill us Because the times are a-changing. But God makes all things new. So don't give up on yourself or your loved one or the people you know that look like they're going to perish. Don't give up. Because God doesn't. You matter to God. You matter. Everyone matters. God is making all things new.